I'm Roger Smith and I'm a watchmaker making 18 watches a year. 18? Yeah. So not very productive then. No. <laughs> How many of you are there in the team making these 18 watches in here? Yeah. Well, it's 15, so it's, uh, yeah. And yeah. well, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's a pretty poor level of productivity. You join us from the Royal College of Surgeons in London, which for many years has been the home of the most eminent surgeons in the world. There's no more fitting venue to come for an evening to meet Roger Smith, because basically watchmaking is the only job in the world I can think of that requires the same degree of intricacy, precision and attention to detail as surgery. In fact, probably more so. Um, would I find it easy to take out someone's appendix or build a watch? I'd definitely find it easy to take out someone's appendix. It was a fascinating evening with Roger in which he talked a little bit about his very special company, his background in watchmaking, having grown up as a, as a protege of, of George Daniels, and his incredible company based on the Isle of Man. They produce only 18 watches per year and there's a waiting list which runs for years and years and years. In fact, that waiting list is closed, so if you want one, you can't have one. You might have to go to auction instead, where one of his recent watches sold for, I think it was more than £600,000. So I think it just goes to show the, the fame and repute that Roger has had um, in the watchmaking world. It was fascinating to talk to the man himself because one of the things that someone asked him, and it was something that I'd been wondering, was where on earth do you get the patience from to build a watch so painstakingly and intricately by hand? And he said that, you know, it's, it's very much a mindset um, because it could quite easily drive you mad. You know, um, he gave some examples of, you know, some watchmakers who've taken a component and they've been finishing and polishing and finishing and polishing and they've been doing it so furiously and so intently that by the end there's actually nothing of the component left. So he occasionally, he's got a team of, uh, I think he said 15 watchmakers, he occasionally has to tell those guys, um, just don't stop where you are, that is fine, that is good enough. So that's really how he, he obtains these incredible standards. I mean, really the only person in the world making watches genuinely by hand from his workshop in the Isle of Man. It's quite funny, you hear about all these people and you see their watches and you read about what they do, then you come face to face with them. And of course, one of the things you discover is that he's an incredibly modest, self-effacing individual. Most people who have that sort of talent actually are, um, but it's incredible really how much he sort of like almost um, minifies, minimizes his, minimizes, that's the word I'm after, his achievements. He received um, an OBE, which he jokingly referred to as standing for other buggers efforts. But it just goes to show how much reliance he places on his team of watchmakers. In fact, he says that the most, the thing he's most proud of about what he's created is the fact that he's got this, um, this very dedicated team, this very talented team on the Isle of Man, and they're really safeguarding the future of the British watch industry. So not very often you meet people who you can truly call an inspiration, but Roger Smith is certainly one of them. The irony is is that, uh, well, he, he does actually, I was going to say, the irony is he doesn't even own any of his own watches because he can't afford them. That was his joke, not mine. Um, but he has actually, he does actually own one and he owns one of the very early, early prototypes. Um, but for the most part, um, for him, it's not about the fame, it's not about the fortune. Uh, it's not about carving your place in horological legend. It's about the actual watchmaking. And this is something that you really, really get from him. He's someone who absolutely loves his craft and will stop at nothing to make it the best that he possibly can. And thank God that there are people like him in this world because, you know, I mean, I think we're all guilty of it. There are so many half measures. There are so many people who do things not in the proper way. Roger Smith is someone who does things in the proper way. And honestly, in the short term future, in, in this country, in the UK, I don't think we'll really see anyone quite like him. Um, but he has got lots of people working for him, so his, the, the future of the industry in that respect is safe. Um, but what a fascinating insight, what a great opportunity to meet him, and what a sort of intriguing glimpse into the mindset of someone who's such a perfectionist. It's, it's, it's awesome. It really leaves you in so much admiration. And people like him are what I think make us all fascinated about watches. There's, um, 
the room just behind me over there. Uh, I don't know how many people they're expecting. The organizers are saying, well, we're going to have to close a few doors to make it look busy. Not at all. It was packed. And I think that just goes to show the huge amount of interest there is in watches. I mean, the fact that you're even here listening to this shows, shows how much interest there is. And it all comes from people who inspire other people because, you know, I don't think you're interested in anything per se. There always has to be someone who kindles a passion, who drives you towards um, an experience and enthusiasm. Roger is one of those people. They say you should never really meet your heroes face to face, but that's absolutely not true. Today I met one of mine and I thoroughly recommend it.